Good evening, family and friends of Bonner Springs Church of the Nazarene. Welcome again on this Wednesday evening, July 7th. This is July 7th. Wow. It seems like the year is not waiting on anybody. We're halfway through, um, almost halfway through already of this year. And um, anyway, had a little bit of, had a little bit of rain today and uh, made it. We made it so far. That's good. I guess we need a little bit here and there. But uh, we didn't get drenched, at least not here. Anyway, um, as some other places did. Welcome tonight. Glad to have you with us this evening. And I, I uh, just want to give you a reminder to make sure that you uh, like, like the uh, episode and the page, the church page, if you haven't done that yet. Um, and give us a shout out. Let us know that you're watching and where you're watching from. And, and also uh, let us know who you're watching with or, you know, all those good things. Any, any of those feedbacks, just give us a shout out, say hi, uh, wave at us, whatever your, whatever your little heart desires to do, just to let us know that you're watching. We appreciate that very much. And if these mean anything to you, be sure and share it. Uh, that also helps our algorithms and uh, a great deal, and we're grateful for that. But thank you for joining us, and those of you who've been faithful for uh, ever since we started. You've been faithful every, every week to be right here with us, and we are grateful for that. We appreciate it. So very much thank you and um, just uh, continuing to pray for those that we need to be praying for and continuing to uh, surround those i just got word ron ellis's sister passed away uh, this week earlier this week and um, and so the funeral viewing and funeral will be on saturday but uh, so we want to pray for ron and his family and uh, i know they'd appreciate our prayers there as well and there may be some others. I know there's been some answers to prayer. Todd Krause, we've been praying for his cousin. And uh, good news there. They were able to take her off the ventilator. And she's doing better. Uh, still needs prayer. Not out of the woods yet. But uh, at least being able to get off the ventilator is a good, a good sign. And we're grateful for that as well. And uh, so that's a good, a good thing. So thank the Lord for that. And thank you for praying for my sister Martha. She's uh, doing better. She's still struggling, still not feeling quite up to par, but she, at least she was able to go back to work a couple of days, and uh, for a few days anyway, and uh, we're thankful for that. Uh, she felt like going to work. That's a good, a good thing. So good progress being made there as she battles her cancer. And um, anyway, ta uh, Brother Claude is still doing good. Talked to him this morning, and is he still hanging in there, doing strong and doing great? The, He's doing above, ahead of schedule, actually, they, they tell him. But I think he has till like the 28th of July to be able to still be in, in quarantine. And then I'm not sure after that they're going to retest him, give him some new numbers, find out where he's at exactly before they can really release him on that. And then they have to start rebuilding his immune system and uh, those kind of things. So, But I know they appreciate our continued prayers, but he's doing doing good, and we're thankful for that. And as Claude told me, it's all because of God. I know he says, yeah, he's got some good doctors on his team, but it's all because of God and the prayers of God's people surrounding them and lifting them up. And so they're grateful for that, and thank you. And then I, I talked to Tom Tush, and Tom is doing doing good as well. He's feeling really good, doing, doing pretty good, fighting his battle. The only thing that he would ask for us to really pray specifically for is uh, about the dialysis. His kidney numbers are are fluctuating too much and they would rather be able to keep them down uh, at a reasonable number instead of high like at over 10 he they would like to keep them below five the creatine numbers and if they can't get that stabilized then they're looking at possibility uh, putting a permanent port in for his dialysis and that we, we don't want to see that happen and uh, and that's that's very discouraging so we're gonna hold on and pray so that it gives you a way to pray for Tom uh, Tush. Otherwise, he says he feels good, doing good. As I talk to him, he's he sounds great. And uh, but he he is definitely a very much appreciative of all of our prayers and our love surrounding them. And and uh, they have all the food they can handle. He said their refrigerator's packed full. They can't. They don't have any room anymore for food. Everybody's been so good to give them that and to check on them. And they really they really are grateful and appreciate that as well. But uh, so thank you for being such good. Uh, a good family, a good church family, and thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus to all these uh, folks who need who need Him, and we're grateful for that. And uh, 
I would I would give you an update as well on the Hawkins family. That's the the family who uh, the little girl earlier this year. You remember the little girl who uh, fell off of the the tar swing in Edwardsville and and ended up dying. And that family as they deal with that grief, they're he's doing really good. The mom is still really struggling and could really use our prayers uh, as she continues to battle this. But uh, it's just it's a hard thing to get it's a hard thing to get over for sure but they could they're doing better they appreciate all of our prayer they appreciate the the love that's been poured out and the money that was donated to them to help them get through this this time and and they're they are very appreciative of that as well and and uh, they're trying to make it back to, trying to make it to church so we'll we'll see we don't want to put any pressure on them but just keep lifting them in prayer Bobby and Leslie Hawkins as they uh, as they deal with this unfortunate tragedy that happened in their life but so those are those things and then uh, as you know tomorrow night there will not be a bible study for the women who are studying the women of the bible that'll be the next thursday so you have another week uh, to go on that the 15th that that will happen they'll pick that back up and then of course uh, as we go through this this coming weekend saturday morning at eight o'clock is the men's prayer breakfast at the church at eight o'clock and uh, you won't want to miss that. Men, come and join us there. There's uh, biscuits and gravy and bacon and sausage and biscuits and butter and jelly and uh, hash browns and uh, Ron and Kurt Ellis and Charlie Holly. They do a wonderful job in uh, cooking that up and putting that all together. And then a great devotional and inspirational time that uh, Joe Cameron leads us in on that. So that's coming up on Saturday at 8 o'clock at the church downstairs and We'll look forward to seeing you there. And then, of course, after the men's prayer breakfast, then the, the ladies' luncheon is back in full swing, and that happens at 11 o'clock at the church. So we'll clean up. The men will clean up and get out of there. The women come in and take over, and they do the luncheon there, and uh, that's a, that'll be a great time. So ladies, be sure you uh, are aware of that at 11 o'clock at the church downstairs in the kitchen of Floyd Fellowship Hall area. Be a part of that. So, all right, awesome. And then, of course, uh, Sunday morning at, at 9 o'clock is the Bible study that meets there with uh, in person at the church downstairs. And sometimes they do uh, hybrid uh, by Zoom or on, on phone as well. So you can connect there. So let us know if you'd like to be a part of that. Jerry Poe leads that Sunday school class. And Charles Smith has been a part of that leading as well. And uh, so they're studying uh, Revelations of Faith and... Um, it, it, they do. A, they have a great, a great discussion, great time going on there in that Bible study on Sunday morning, eight forty-five, nine o'clock that they meet before church time, and then our morning worship service at ten o'clock right there at at church. And we're looking for more people as they join us in person. And uh, we, we were able to make some more contacts this this last week. And of course, with the holiday, people were out and uh, gone over the weekend. But uh, we're looking for more people coming back. And it'll happen just slowly but surely. We're trying to, to stay abreast with that and uh, just give it time, whatever time is needed. But that's, uh, that's part of that. So we welcome you. We want you to be a part of us. And we're thankful for the service we had this last Sunday, how the Holy Spirit moved in. And I didn't get to preach, which is wonderful. That's always a great thing. I know some people are like, oh, man, I got to preach. Well, sure, I felt like the Lord gave me that message. But I'll preach it again this coming Sunday. So you won't get away from it. I'll do it then. But uh, anyway, it's uh, but we're thankful that God moves in, and we we just don't we have a plan in place, but we don't have to stick to that plan. If God wants to take take over and move in our midst, then we want that to happen, and we're grateful for that to happen. So thank you, and we're glad for the for the wonderful service we had Sunday. We look forward again to God's presence meeting with us again this week as we gather in His house, and then of course Monday night the ladies Bible study led by Pastor Barb, and that happens at six o'clock on Monday night. So you'll, you'll want to be a part of that. And that's both hybrid and in person at the church. So let us know so we can give you the information and you can, you can uh, join up with that. Uh, so a lot of things that are happening. And, and please notice those things that are in the bulletin or on, the, uh, on our website, the announcements that are there. It's, uh, you won't want to miss all that's, that's coming up as Vacation Bible School. We're just having the one day on Saturday, July 31st. So if you have any questions or you'd like to help out, please please see Pastor Barb, contact her, and she will be able to put you in, uh, in the right place uh, to help with the special needs that we have that uh, she would like help with. So it'll be, it'll be a wonderful 
a wonderful time. So a lot of stuff going on, but that's all right. And always we're so grateful and thankful for your faithfulness and support and sending in your tithes and your offerings as you send it in, either by paying online. There's always a link on our website or and from our Facebook page. You can go to the website as well and, and give a link there to give online, which is very secure. Do that. Susie and I do that. We do it every all the time. That's how we do our, our tithes and offerings. And then, uh, of course, people send it in. I think last week about $1,200 was sent in b b through the mail. And then uh, in person, we have the boxes in the back for you to drop your, uh, drop your, your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings uh, in those boxes in person at the church. So those, those three ways to give. And we're grateful for it, and we appreciate it so very much. God is good all the time, and He deserves our best. Well, tonight... As we look at the, at the Word of God for our devotional tonight, I'm, I'm drawn to John's Gospel, chapter 9. John's Gospel, chapter 9. And uh, this story is a really interesting story. It's, uh, it's the story of the man that was born blind. And John, chapter 9, in the very first part of it, where uh, he saw the blind man, Jesus, as they went along, Jesus saw the blind man from, who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, you know, teacher, who, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, well, nobody sinned, neither him or his parents sinned. But this happened that the works of God might be displayed in him. So that's important. We talked about last week about people seeing God's work in us. We talked about it on Sunday about uh, when uh, the Apostle Paul said that God told him, his strength, God's strength, is made perfect in our weakness. And so we are, when we are weak, then we are strong. So that's, he says, that nobody sinned. This happened to this man. He was born blind so that the works of God might be displayed in him. And it just so happened. Well, Jesus healed him. And go down to verse 13. The Pharisees uh, begin to investigate how this man could have been healed. Now, remember, they, they didn't want anything to do with Jesus. The Pharisees didn't believe that he was really sent from God. So they brought to the Pharisees, verse 13, the man who had been who had been blind, and now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath day. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. They asked the blind man, how did you receive your sight? He said, the man said, well, he just put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said that this man was not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. And others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Some believed, some didn't believe. They were divided. How, the, how in the world this could happen? And then they turned again to the blind man and said, what have you to say about him? It was your eyes that he opened, so what do you have to say about it? The man replied, well, he's a prophet. He must be a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Now here they are holding a court and they sent for the man's parents. So they they uh, what do you call it um, when you uh, uh, subpoena? They subpoenaed his parents to come to court. That's what we might. That's what we would call it here. So they called his parents. And they said, is this your son? This is verse 19. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? Well, we know he's our son, the parents answered. And we know that he was born blind. There's no question about it. We know that. But how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we don't know. In fact, why don't you ask him? He's of age. <laughs> And let him, he can speak for himself. So ask him. His parents said this. This is an important part here in verse 22. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he's of age, ask him. He knows. <laughs> so a second time, they called the blind man. They called the man who had been blind. They called him back. They said, give glory to God by telling the truth. They thought he was lying all this time, they said. 
We know that this man is a sinner. Well, isn't that interesting? Well, so, listen to his reply. We know that this man is a sinner. Look at verse 25. He said, he replied, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> the one thing I do know, I don't know who he is. I don't know if he's a sinner. I don't know who he is. But one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I can see. And you can't take that away from me. So then they ask him, well, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered, he said, I have told you already and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Oh, you want to become his disciples too. So you want to become his disciples. Well, then they hurled insults at him and said, you are this fellow's disciple. We're disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for, as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. And the man answered, well, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And to this they all replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Huh. Quite a story, isn't it? I'm, I'm just going to stop right there because Jesus goes on and talks about the spiritual blindness as well that he had. But I, I want to I just come back. Because that whole story, it's, an, it's really quite a story. If you, and there's a lot packed into that story. But just to keep it simple, verse 25 is the one that really pops out to me. Verse 25. When he told these people, he said, Whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know. I was blind, but now I see. The one thing I know. You see, right here throughout this chapter 9 of John's Gospel, we're, we're introduced to this man who, having been blind from birth, was not able to see, and Jesus healed him. And you would think that that would be really a grand and glorious and joyous time for everybody, right? It just that, This is remarkable. Everybody would just be rejoicing in it. Well, Everything was not so hunky-dory. Everybody, it just wasn't a, a joyous time. Everything was not joyous. Because the church leaders, the church leaders of that time, hounded and persecuted this man, even dragging his parents into court to find out what had happened to him. How in the world could this happen to somebody that, that was not in the church culture? They wanted this former blind man to make a public statement to the effect that the man who had healed him was not a prophet, nor was he even a member of the established church culture. He was just an ordinary sinner, an ordinary man that had no right to do or to pretend that he was acting as a mouthpiece for God. So... I was reading after Herman Gokul, and Herman Gokul says, worn down, worn down by the cruel cross-examination, this poor man was no match for his clever interrogators, and so he just finally blurted out, whether he was a sinner or not, I don't know. But the one thing I do know, that once I was blind, but now I can see. That's all that matters to me. <laughs> and I... I like that. And Herman Gokul, he, he concludes this. He says, in those final words, this man, this once previously blind man, has given us the core of effective, of all effective Christian witnessing. In effect, Gokul says, he was saying, this man was saying, you may have all the clever arguments on your side. You may know exactly what to say and how to say it and how to put it in in its proper place and where it came from and how it works. You may know all of that, and that's well and good, and that's fine by me, if that's where you want to stick it. But there's one thing you'll never be able to change 
One thing that I know, which you'll never be able to change my mind, is that I used to be blind, but now I can see. I used to be blind, but now I can see. That's the one thing I know. <laughs> I like that statement. I like that statement a lot. One thing I know. And it just reminds me that we may not always, we may not always be able to match with match wits with the theologians, the members of, of religious cults or philosophers. We not, may not be able to match their wit. We may not be able to match their abilities and their, their smarts, their intellect. But we can say, this one thing I know, that once I used to be spiritually blind, once I was lost, but now I'm fine, now I'm found. I once was spiritually blind, but now I see. I see Jesus, and I see that he's everything to me. One thing I know. <laughs> uh, it's like the song that we sing around Easter time. About he lives, he lives. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen? You know, I'm, I'm, I just... Can I just share something with you real quick? I don't, I don't want to take up extra time here tonight, but here a couple of weeks ago, yeah, I'm going to just give you some examples of God's working right now in our midst. Just a couple of weeks ago, Blake Reinhardt, some of you may know who Blake is. I may have to, we may have to remind you who he is, but you'll see him at church, Blake Reinhardt. He, uh, before he, before he started coming to church, before he came and gave his life to the Lord, he had a situation that happened and his license was on probation. He had a, he was in and out of court with the DUI possibility or DUI struggling with that. Uh, just the unfortunate legal things that were happening in his life. And here a couple of weeks ago, he had a final, he's been, he's been battling this court thing back and forth, back and forth. And finally they had a final thing a couple of weeks ago, final court date. Blake was really worried. They, he, they, I mean, the possibility he would have his license taken away. He would be put on probation his, uh, and suspended for a year. His license could be suspended for a year. He wasn't sure how that was going to help him get back and forth to work. He couldn't be able, wouldn't be able to come to church uh, or drive himself to church. Um, just a lot of things. He was really worried about how that would, how that would hamper his, his life and doing the things that he felt like he needed to do. I remember the day here a couple of weeks ago uh, that uh, that court date and Blake let me know what the court date was and I remember meeting up with Blake and praying with him right before he goes into court prayed with Blake that God would just use this for his glory and would calm Blake's nerves and would give Blake give Blake the grace that he needed to face whatever the decision would be and that we were just going to trust God to work this out I, I remember I remember trying to pump Blake up and say Blake we just we just got to trust we got to believe we're going to believe this in God's hands God's going to take control of this <laughs> and then that evening after the after all the the court went through the the judge looked at, at Blake's case and saw that he'd been going to church had turned his life around he'd been going to work hadn't met he's been a very faithful employee hasn't missed he's been he hasn't stepped out of line at all he's been going to church they recognize that and the judge said you know i think i think we're done here i think he's done and he just wrote it off and and said time served his probation nothing else was done for blake what an answer to prayer how in the world how how god worked to to show blake that god cares about these things in our life and it worked. That's just two weeks ago. Now let me just tell you what happened this week. All right, Can I, this happened yesterday. You know, Sunday, uh, Jenny C got up in church. In her testimony talked about her son Brett, and we've been praying for Brett. He's been struggling with alcohol, he, his alcoholism, and we've been praying for him. It's been a real struggle. Uh, the devil whips him up and down one side and around the other. He, he's lost several jobs over the years because of it. He's he's going through a divorce. His divorce. Um, just you know in the last few months and uh, he's got a place on his own an apartment now of his own and uh, just a real struggle for Brett 
Well, he had an opportunity to uh, go and apply for a job here just this week. And so, in fact, it was yesterday. He went and applied for a job, had an interview to talk with these people. It's a union job. And uh, the, the guy just said, you know, he said, uh, I, really, I really would like to really would like to hire you but he said we're, we're just not in a place where we can hire anybody right now so in fact we've we've actually shut down a whole shift because we didn't have enough, it's, everything's kind of slowed down but we really would like to have you and brett said well i understand that and i appreciate that i'm gonna i'm still gonna have to find a job i'm gonna look for another job and if i get another job i'm gonna you know gonna have to go to work and the guy said well we'll we'll keep you on our we'll keep you in our a database and we'll contact you and if you have another job when we call you and you're happy there then no problem you don't you don't have to come that that we just want to I want to make sure that we get this interview out of the way he left the interview the guy called him back and said you know what he said uh, I really would I really would like to hire you but he said he said I was talking uh, to some higher-ups another couple of managers of the company he said uh, they would like to uh, they would like to talk to you they would like to talk to you so he went in today at 1 30 this afternoon brett went in today to talk to have a second interview with all three of the major uh, boss people of the of the job managers of the job and he, <laughs> brett called me back and he said you know believe this pastor i'm on my way to the clinic to have my physical they hired me i start immediately a place that didn't even have and I said, Brett, that, that's an answer to prayer. He said, God's trying to tell me something. I said, exactly. God is still trying to show you how he cares for you and what's happening in your life. And he's working that miracle out in him. So Brett said, I, I, I don't know. There's no other answer for it except that God is good. I, I hear Brett saying the same as this blind man. I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to put the answers to it. I don't know what's really happening. All I know is... This is where I was before, and this is what's happening now. I once was spiritually blind, but now I can see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. That happened. Can I tell you another another answer to prayer? Just yesterday, our, our dear brother, Jeremy Mulek, he's been battling custody with his, his two precious daughters and his, his ex-wife and and uh, it's been a it's been a quite a i mean she's falsely accused him of all kinds of things and he's been in and out of court trying to trying to battle that and it's just been wearing him it's it's a hard it's been a hard road hard thing and i've been trying to walk beside jeremy all this time for for the last for quite a while talking with him and praying with him along this road trusting the lord and god has certainly worked several times but again yesterday he had a court date yesterday and uh, I he called me right before he went into court I, I was able to pray with him over the phone that God would give him strength and that God would work it out <laughs> and he called me back last night to say pastor I it's just God answered prayer God was with me and and the judge was very fair and cutting things equally and and everything that he was wishing for that he was hoping for God worked out so it's, I, I don't know how to answer this. And Jeremy was telling me, I don't know how else to answer this except that it's God working in my life, that, that it's God bringing this all about. And it just reminded me of this passage of the blind man saying, I don't know, you guys have all your clever answers. You have all the ways to theologically put it right and how to step all the processes of it. The blind man says, I don't know anything about all that. All I know is once I was blind, now I can see. And for me, I, all I know is once I was in spiritual blindness, now I can see. Once I was lost, now I am found. And there's only one excuse, there's only one answer to that, and that is Jesus. God working through Jesus in my life, in my heart, and in my life. So, one thing I know. I may not have all the answers. I may not be able to give you the answers. But one thing I know. And that's what I can tell you about is how it's worked personally in my life and how it's worked personally in your life. The one thing we know, that's how God works. Amen. Isn't that good? That's just, that's just good stuff. So I thought of a question as we close this up tonight. I, I thought of a question for you. That is, is what, what one thing, what one thing does God want you to know about him? What one thing does God want you to know 
about him. And then maybe we, could, we should just quiet our minds and, and thank God for that one thing. Because that one thing, it is the gift of love to you in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a gift of love to you. That one thing. Hold on to it, brothers and sisters. Hold on to it. Whenever the storms rage around us, when things get dark, we don't understand what's happening all around us. One thing we know, we can hang on to God's word. He is always true. He is always with us. He never fails. Never fails us at all. The one thing we know. And you know, I, I thought, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to sing a song because I don't know, I don't know really of a song that uh, that really goes with it. But then my mind just went as I, I basically gave up uh, thinking about it. My mind went to an old song that I think a lot of you know. And it goes like this. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving faith to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word wrought peace within my heart. I know not how the Spirit moves, convincing men of sin, revealing Jesus through the Word, creating faith in Him. I know not what of good or ill may be reserved for me, of weary ways or golden days before his face I see. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I'll walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Amen. Aren't you glad? Well, there's a lot of things we don't know. We don't know why. We don't know how. We don't know what. We don't know when. <laughs> but one thing we do know, we know in whom I have believed. He has proven himself time and time again, and he's continuing to prove himself even today. He's proving himself true and righteous and good. <laughs> he deserves to be believed. Amen? And I'm glad that I'm holding on to that. So you can too. Praise his name. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your goodness to us tonight. Thank you for that we have your word to, to hold on to. We have your word to encourage us, to build us up. To, to let us know that the same God who healed the blind man, that once he was blind, now he can see, is the same God that's working in the life of, of Blake and Brett and Jeremy and, and Todd's cousin and Claude and, and Tom Tush and, and Ron, all these that you are working in our lives. Thank you for that. It, it builds us up and we, we relish that and we build upon those victories Lord, that, that helps us to create 
building blocks and stepping stones that we can get closer to you and draw closer to you as well as to each other. Thank you for your word. Lord, we just give you praise for it, that we can believe that. When everything else seems to be faltering around us, your word is always faithful. And we know whom we have believed. And we're able, and you are able to keep us until that day when that day comes. Thank you. Oh, Lord, we give you praise for it. And we give you thanks. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Pray that you would keep all of us in your care. And keep us safe. Until we can gather together again on the Lord's Day, on Sunday, in your presence, in your house, worshiping together in spirit and in truth. We give you praise for it in the strong name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you, brothers and sisters. Thanks for meeting with us tonight and uh, giving the, spending your few minutes with us this evening. And uh, I trust that it is a, a blessing to you. So. Like I said, if this if it means anything to you, you might think of somebody else that could be encouraged or could use use this. Why share it with them? Please share it. Share it on your Facebook page. Share it somehow else. Uh, just share. Give point people to this website or or give the words to them yourself. But uh, give us a hi, wave at us, a shout out to us, or whatever the case may be. Give us a call if there's anything that we can help pray for you about. Please let us know. We want to lift that before the Lord in prayer with you as well and um, oh yes another person that we've been praying for is Teresa Teresa Berry and Teresa Berry that's uh, Everett Beulah Berry that's their daughter-in-law actually uh, Teresa is also Bill C some of you might remember Bill C who was a part of our church is his daughter as well but uh, she is struggling uh, with some health issues and they're trying to decide whether to do they're saving her from a stroke a very imminent stroke with her carotid arteries and so forth and so she's going next this next week for uh, some more evaluation and some tests but um, they thought she was in the hospital here a week or two ago and that was very uh, critical but she was able to go home and now they're, they're trying and she's doing much better we're thank, thanking the Lord for that we continue to surround her with prayers as well but God is able and we know that he is so anyway however just uh, let us know that thank you for joining with us tonight and uh, we, we appreciate your support Appreciate your being with us, and may God richly bless. So we're looking forward to seeing you on Sunday at 10 o'clock in person at the church. And if you can't make it in person, then we will have it online. I, I think last week we had some, some mic difficulties, and so maybe the sound wasn't always uh, on. But uh, we're doing our best. Thank you for being patient with us as we uh, navigate through this way. But uh, we're hoping to see you on Sunday at 10 o'clock right there bright and early so until then brothers and sisters take care of yourselves and each other and may god richly bless you we'll see you then good night